live from the Financial Thing Studios. It's the Peer to Peer Lending Essentials Podcast. Welcome to the very first Financial Thing Peer to Peer Essentials Podcast. I'm your host, Lawrence, and I'm the author of all of the Financial Thing Peer to Peer articles and lending reviews that you've probably been reading over the past uh, 18 months to two years. I'm very excited to be here with you today. And we're going to discuss all things that are peer-to-peer lending. And this podcast was developed with you, the listener, in mind. And my goal is to bring you interesting guests ranging from peer-to-peer platform company representatives to actual just regular peer-to-peer lenders. And with hopes that these people can share their experiences so we can all learn and grow with that together. And you always have to remember that peer-to-peer lending world is very fluid things change and morph into different forms and it's really important to stay abreast of the developments and things that are happening so with that being said i'm very excited to introduce uh, the very first podcast guest his name is yarrow rittle i hope i said that right because i do have a habit of butchering names but yarrow is based in london and he is a, an avid peer-to-peer lender himself, and I'm glad to have him on the podcast today. So, how are you doing today, Yaro? Oh, it's a pleasure, a pleasure to be your first uh, guest on the podcast. But very well. Let me ask you firstly, did I butcher your name? No, you did well. You did well. I've, I've had worse. All right, good. So, Yaro, you've, I know, been involved in the uh, peer-to-peer lending world for a while. So, t- tell me a little bit about you and what you do for a living so the day job is very much working in the human capital advisory space professional services really not very much related to -to peer-to-peer at all Um, i did do a stint in wealth management before but i have always had and still have uh, a very deep-seated interest in the financial technology space, especially working with startups and have the privilege of working with a number of fintech startups here in London. What kind of startups have you been involved with? So I've worked with a number uh, here in London, so some based in Level 39, which is a uh, the leading uh, fintech accelerator. Um, so they've ranged from anywhere from banking startups to social trading uh, to crowdfunding, uh, so really a variety of different companies. How on earth and did you discover peer-to-peer lending? My first, I first dipped my toe in P2P um, back in February of this year. So I'm still relatively new to it. The whole journey started with a desire to buy a flat in London, which, as anyone living in London will know, is extortionate and very difficult to do. I had some money. That I had the sitting on the side that was making very, very little return sitting in the bank. So I was looking for ways to maximize the return. And uh, lo and behold, Funding Circle showed up. Is, is that a company that you still continue to invest with? Because you know, I, I was a big fan of Funding Circle at one point and eventually started looking at things when they reduce their interest rates. I think I exited the funding circle at the beginning of this year, so kind of when you were getting in, and we'd been spoiled by the good times that funding circle had given to us with these ridiculous interest rates, you know, A-plus loans at 10% uh, with relatively low risk, and then things changed. Is that something you continue to invest in at this point? So I've been scaling down my investment funding circle as well for a very similar reason. The, the rewards that you're getting from it do not match the amount of risk that's involved by putting your hard-earned pennies into that platform. What, one of the biggest challenges with funding circle is there's it's unsecured loans many many times. And uh, looking at some of the other companies like Savings Street, um, or Twino, which I use, which are either uh, secured loans or buyback guarantee or provide some elements of security. Um, I tend to look beyond, uh, look at those in favor, more favorably. Um, and I suppose the second element as well is one piece of due diligence that I've started doing more and more often with, with companies now is looking at their balance sheets and looking at um, the financial health of the platform itself. And uh, 
Funding Circle, while they're clearly big and have a big, uh, high volume of loans on their books, um, they've been loss making for the majority of their existence, which isn't to say they can't turn a profit, but certainly it makes me nervous. That's very smart. I think that's something that a lot of people who are in the peer-to-peer -peer lending space as investors do not pay enough attention to um, is how financially healthy is the actual company operating. And because we all know a company can only make a loss for so many amount of years, even though having said that, you look at a huge company like Amazon that was 10 years that they were making a loss and they seem to do okay. But I, I, I often get very nervous when these companies are making a loss year after year after year. Uh, because I, I've always said that if a platform goes under, that, that is the single biggest risk that lenders face. If that platform goes under, you know how much of the capital interest of the lenders will be recovered. So you you came into Funding Circle as your very first platform. When you first discovered Funding Circle, how long did it take you before you felt comfortable that I'm actually going to make a deposit and put some money into this crazy investment platform? For me, Funding Circle was more the tip of the iceberg of the whole peer-to-peer -peer realm. I'm the sort of person that probably wouldn't make an investment before really evaluating all the other options, which led me to look at a, a number of other investment platforms that are out there and uh, try to compare them like to like. And what I ended up doing is spending, I believe, it was at least one or two weeks um, creating a, a set of standardized criteria to compare the different platforms because they often make it quite difficult to do so. And only once I've had a few that I've looked at and was comfortable with that I actually made that investment. And so you, you took a couple of weeks, you put some money in. After that, what, what was your next platform that you delved into after the funding circle? I believe it was Savings Stream. The reason being is because it was simple. Uh, there was no extra frills, if you will, to the platform. It was quite a straightforward return so you get 12 percent flat return one percent every month paid back um it was in the property bridging space uh, and it certainly made sense to me did you stick to mainly those two platforms and kind of ramp up your investment amount or did you have a certain amount that you said no i'm not willing to put more than a certain amount into either one platform i began the search for the next platform which exposed you more to consumer loans um, and at the same time, I started looking beyond UK and looked at more European platforms. So the likes of um, Bondara, Twino, Pindi, some of the, some of those some of those bigger ones, uh, and ultimately settled on Twino um, because having read about some of the others, the volatility of some of the others. Um, I chose Twino because of the buyback guarantee, which seemed promising because of some of the fundamentals behind the platform. Um, and I also chose to take a small stake in FinB, which in my eyes was a very high risk platform with very high uh, risk reward ratios, if you will, where they provide about uh, they use a reverse auction system, so about a 20% return, which in my eyes is clearly unsustainable. But uh, I want to see how the mechanics of that worked. So my method was very much to invest small amounts, and in my own small amounts was 250 to 500 pounds per platform. Uh, to FinB, I think I put in about 200 pounds to see how it went. Um, and just took pause and evaluated them from there. And so are you still invested in those European platforms now or did you exit out and just stuck with the, was it Twino? Yeah, so Twino I am a big fan of. I've had good returns from them, uh, consistent returns in terms of what they report versus what I expected them to return. Um, so that is a platform that I will be increasing my investment in over uh, or the near future. Um, FinB is one that I will be scaling out of um, purely because it is a very volatile platform in my eyes. Um, and there are substantial risk factors which 
don't merit the time and work investments one have to put into it to to really to, to be with that platform yeah and it's interesting because i know one of the things that attracted me to mentos was the these secured car loans that they used to offer um 12 and a half percent i think was the interest rate and of course then one day they just uh they just disappear from the platform just all of a sudden and gone and then you think wow you, you any of these platforms can just turn off the funnel of good loans at any point when they decide they don't want to offer those things anymore. And so you find yourself looking, well, do I want to jump over to a different European platform because they may offer something similar? I think maybe Twino offers um, these similar guaranteed loans. But uh, there's always been, it, it's always a bit of a problem with being over in a different country. But you've got to transfer it back to the uk pay the exchange fees transfer it back out again pay the exchange fees and it honestly just feels like a bit of a pain in the rear end i don't know if it, if you think it's worth doing that or not it's a fair comment and it, you've actually raised a good point it's it, it certainly i think one of the challenges to actually adopting uh p2p and i know we'll go into this later but it's the friction cost and the the uh, the, the barriers to entry and the effort required to make an initial investment is often something that's overlooked. And what this is why so many of the peer-to-peer -peer platforms look at them, make try to make it as easy as possible for users to deposit money and start investing. Um, but you're right; you, those European platforms add an extra hurdle that one needs to, to get over. So, out out of your liquid net worth. How much do you currently have percentage-wise inside of peer-to-peer -peer at the moment? I would consider myself a more, uh, I suppose, a higher risk profile, if you will. Uh, again, as you know, given my age, given my situation. Um, so at the moment, I have about forty percent of my liquid net worth uh, in that in peer-to-peer. -peer. I wouldn't look to increase that percentage anytime soon, purely again because I am, while having a higher risk profile, I still favor diversifying across different portfolio types and not just keep peer to peer. So, so, so 40% is, is, you know, it's kind of a high amount, I would say. I mean, obviously, me being a little bit only, well, I'm just two years older than you, of course, but don't laugh. Um, I, I see 40% as is a, is a pretty high amount, you know, risk-wise. If you woke up tomorrow morning and the whole peer-to-peer -peer business crashed and it was gone, how would you feel? Well, it wouldn't ruin me, certainly not. And this is why 40% is the maximum I would go to. My initial reaction will be an element of surprise that everything could come down so quickly. Let me answer the question this way. The reason perhaps why I've scaled to that kind of level is I've looked at some of the alternatives out there and they haven't really satisfied my requirements. So a clear alternative peer-to-peer -peer lending would be investing in stocks and shares and again the vehicle for that might be a nutmeg or a wealth buy or a wealth fund uh, depending on what country you're in um which is clearly it will clearly have slightly less returns but perhaps a more traditional investment class through a slightly more innovative vehicle to do so now in my mind stocks are and if you speak to any uh, wealth manager the baseline advice is if you're a 25 or 30 year old something, you'd probably have 70% of your portfolio in stocks, 30% in bonds. And as you get older and uh, your risk profile reduces, you scale that down into bonds, more into bonds and less into stocks. Now, in my eyes, peer to peer functions that will behave very much like a fixed income product or, or a bond. In the sense that you get, you invest money, you have a, an interest which is paid to you on a monthly or whatever main basis, which are very much like a yield a bond has, and you repay the principal at the end, just like you would do or have with a bond. 
Now the difference is that, that there's no fluctuation in price of that uh, of that uh, particular product, and it also has a high higher return. Now compare that to a stock. Um, you might be you might buy a particular stock in the market which yields X percentage, um, but there is a good chance that the stock might fall in value tomorrow due to some sort of fundamental um, thing in the market you can never predict and foresee. So ultimately, you buy a stock for $100 uh, and it falls down to 75 You're straight away just 25% of your investment. And in my mind, that makes it very illiquid. So you have to wait until it either recovers or stomach that loss. So to, to answer your question, the reason why I've invested so much into it is because I failed to see comparative alternatives out there that are that suit my style and suit my risk profile in the same way that it does. You've had a visit from Tina, obviously, right? You know Tina, right? Tina? Tina, yeah, there is no other alternative. Tina. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I have, but I didn't know yeah, about Yeah, yeah, she's, she's quite the uh, the woman I hear. So uh, currently you're, you got your investing in, in funding circle that you're kind of ramping down. You're still doing Twino. What's the other, what's the other, you said you're investing in Fi. What are the other platforms that you're currently in? Same stream uh, funding circle, uh, Twino, uh, Bond Mason and Finbu. Uh, so those are the five. Same stream, uh, Bond Mason and Twino tend to hold the most. You know, as we talk about having to put so much time and effort into peer to peer, if you, somebody like me that has upwards of, uh, 19 or 20 different platforms, I always have the question that people email is, how do you keep all of this organized? Yeah, it's, to be honest with you, it's not a very uh, sophisticated tool. <laughs> if I, it's very much just an Excel sheet that uh, that I clearly outline every platform, the amount I invest in every platform, uh, weighting, allocation, expected returns. I'm actually looking to build a more sophisticated software for to help to keep track and give investors better tools to aggregate all that data in one portal window if you will that's exciting i would definitely be interested to use something like that and yarrow how often are you looking at that spreadsheet because when i first started doing this i found myself religiously logging into these accounts and watching <laughs> even if the damn thing just went up a pound i would get so excited and i've felt this need to have to log in and log in and it was becoming so time consuming it was like an addiction what, what's your experience been with that are you finding yourself checking this spreadsheet all the time to see what's going on yeah to be honest with you when i first started out well, especially when i first invested in the platform I'm, I'm exactly the same as you i probably log in twice a day <laughs> to have a look what's changed and quite clearly nothing has changed at all or maybe an extra 50p has been added <laughs> To my you're an interest. addict too you're an addict uh it is and it's a very addicting thing what i've i've, I've kind of tended to do now is just to really just kind of let it go and um kind of scaling down the login uh, from twice a day to uh perhaps once a week which is healthier release <laughs> the shackles of peer-to-peer -peer and you will feel free that's exactly. what i say <laughs> We talk about risk and, and fear and what kind of fears do you have regarding this high amount of net worth that you have inside of peer-to-peer? -peer? Uh, certainly the biggest fear is exactly what you said earlier, is platforms collapsing. And platforms collapsing and the recovery of, of my investments, you know, if, if and when they do collapse. And clearly, you know, that is a big, big concern. One element which is reared its head not too long ago certainly is the question of liquidity so the ability to cash out um, when you want to and when you need to and one thing I noticed for example after Britain decided to leave the EU and after the whole Brexit vote um, Sailing Stream which is one of my main uh, platforms was flooded with uh, people looking to sell their loan parts uh, which is Phenomenal because for months and months and months before that, there's a huge deficit of loans uh, available to buy. And we'll go with a split second. 
And for for about a week or so, the volume skyrocketed. So I think it was uh, I think it was about two or three million that was available to buy in the secondary market. I I, I believe I thought it was a, a temporary spike because of the whole fundamentals, and I'd seen it happen before. Um, and luck, you know, quite rightly, it's reverted back to the mean. But it, it raises more the question of if there is a a broader collapse or regression um, that really touches the peer-to-peer -peer space as a whole. What? It, how difficult would it be for me to get my money out? Um, and that is something that uh, weighs in my mind. Um, and I suppose the third thing that kind of made me think is there are so many of these peer-to-peer -peer platforms popping up everywhere. If so many of these companies popping up, are they using similar underwriting and credit models to approve these loans? But if one collapses, will they all collapse if they're, if they're interrelated? Um, so again, that is a factor. And the second factor to that is clearly, you know, demand demand for these loans outstripping the amount of these loans. So we've seen it with lending club over in the US where there's been a compromise in the quality of the loans that that are uh, being floated on the on the platforms. How how risky do you think peer to peer lending really is? Uh, this guy came out and said, you know, everybody that invests in peer to peer lending is basically foolish and it's a terribly risky thing, and it's going to make two thousand eight banking meltdown look like playtime compared to what's going to happen with peer to peer. Now, how risky do you? Yarrow yeah, think the peer-to-peer -peer lending really is. I think the perceived risks stem from the lack of understanding of what it really is, and which is quite natural given the relative kind of immaturity of this of this space. Um, I actually spoke to a former uh, colleague of mine or someone I used to work with at a wealth management firm. Um, and he is very anti peer to peer and doesn't really see it as an uh, any asset class or would never ever recommend it to his clients. In my eyes, how risky is it? I think like any any industry that is in relatively early stages of evolution, um, you know, by definition there are many unknowns. But from the fundamentals which I've seen happen in the market. So the government backing, the introduction of the innovative finance ISA, which allows you to put your P2P investments in an ISA, the tax efficient wrapper. Um, the evolution of peer to peer over in the US, which is, is clearly you know, far ahead of the UK at this stage. Um, and the whole reason of why it came about, so the whole kind of 2008 crisis where Banks wouldn't lend, people, businesses can get access to credit, etc. So I think there are lots of fundamental factors that support the development of peer to peer, which make it less risky, certainly over the next couple of years. The caveat to that is that may change. Interest rates may rise. There may be another recession. XYZ might happen, which will have a Huge detrimental effect that we can't even see. But uh, I think all in all, that I think some of the risks are a bit overstated. So Yaro, as as somebody that I would say you're a relatively, I don't know that I would call you a veteran since you've only been doing it since February. You might be considered <laughs> sort of a new peer to peer lender, and there may be some people listening to this that have not yet invested a single pound into peer to peer lending. What, what's some of the advice that you'd give? So someone looking to get into peer-to-peer -peer lending, you know, you know, maybe some of the things that you've learned along the way that you think might help other people. Investing and putting your hard-earned money isn't just a rational decision, it's also an emotional one. And you want to be comfortable with understanding of what you're putting your money into. The second thing I would do is, is set, just make a decision what kind of investor you want to be, whether you want to be hands off and relatively low risk. So put your money in place X and leave it and you have the relatively kind of average returns, if you will. 
or whether you want to be a more active investor uh, looking to try some of the newer platforms that are going to have higher risk, higher reward uh, profiles. And I suppose the third thing is when looking at companies and deciding where to dip your toe in the water, clearly some of the big well-known companies are good. Um, and they provide an element of social proof and a level of, of validation around the business model that they have. But don't overemphasize the importance of this over the actual business model that they actually have, which is going back to what we were just sort of talking about now in terms of, you know, is this business profitable? So I think just understand what it is, figure out what kind of investor you want to be and the sort of returns and losses potentially that you're willing to willing to make, um, and ultimately look around and, and and create a diversified portfolio suit for yourself. So your eggs aren't all in one basket. Okay. Well, great. Is there anything else you would like to tell the financial thing people? There is. There is one thing. I have been, and I'm sure Lawrence is in the same boat. Uh, I've been a bit a bit of a crazy person and really spent a lot of time investigate different platforms, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't. And I have a very strong belief that peer-to-peer -peer has got legs and it's got a sort of bright future. And what I'm, we're trying to do is to make it easier for people to invest uh, uh, and, and lower the risks and take all the time out of, of creating these portfolios and, and managing them and, and creating this diverse, the diversification that's needed to lower the risks. So we're working on something that may may or may not be renamed, but if you want to check it out um, and uh, keep uh, updated on the latest uh, goings on, calling it Babylon Investments. So you can find it at Babylon, which is B-A-B-Y-L-O-N dot dot launch rock, which is L-A-U-N-C-H-R-O-C-K dot com. At this stage, it is a simply a landing page. Um, so if you are interested in keeping up to date or with our latest going on, then go over there, check it out, put in your email and we'll keep you posted. And as soon as anything comes out, we will uh, we'll let you know. Okay, that sounds good. So it's babylon.launchrock.com. You go check that out. Yarrow, I would like to thank you for joining us and it definitely went uh, as well as I could have hoped for a very first podcast. Hopefully it, it was entertaining for the people out there listening. This is a new podcast, and I don't know who the next guest is going to be, but I can tell you that it will be somebody extremely exciting. But um, like I said, I do plan to have uh, representatives from the peer-to-peer -peer companies. I do have some interesting guests lined up for you, so come back, visit financialthing.com, sign up for the mailing list, and I'll send you an email notification to let you know who's going to be on the show. And keep checking out the reviews. I thank you very much for the support, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.